Yo, 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 it's your dog KC3, live from the 615. Y'all go check out my new album, 1998. That's KC with the number three. And go check out my album, 1998. I'm live in the motherfucking field with my dogs, Authentic Talk, the best podcast show in the world. Me and my nigga, Fast Money. Salute. Live fast, that ball and shit. Mm. Fresh from the streets. Authentic TV. Legend edition. Once again. You know what I'm saying? Real nigga edition. You know what I'm talking about? From the motherfucking ground up. You know what I'm saying? From the motherfucking. From Untouchable to the good fellas. The mob. You know what I'm saying? Young Hog and KC. You niggas know what it is. Y'all know the move. You know what I mean? New album in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Taking it back, giving y'all niggas the real shit. Nothing but that every time. You know what I mean? Big boy guest today. <laughs> real nigga. You know what I'm saying? My nigga KC, man. What's up, man? KC in the motherfucking building, man. What up, what up, what up? Yeah, man. Hey, first of all, yeah, we got to let them know. Okay. It ain't just KC. For sure. You got to put the three at the end. The three. KC3. KC3. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about where the three comes from, though. Okay. You know KC because you just, you've been knowing me 20 years. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, everybody be like, what what the fuck does KC stand for? Anyways. Okay. okay. It's just a neighborhood nickname. Okay. When I was young, we used to be on the block and, and the old heads was like, you can't go by your real name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we was doing yeah. what young niggas do. So um I wanted to come up with my own name and okay. we came up with a few names and I ended up coming up with the KC. And they stood for something, but today okay. it, it's just KC. But um as the internet game came along, okay. I would um, drop music, we would drop music like when the internet shit first started popping, it was me and Hog, so I had got past the Untouchables Goodfella and all that shit. Okay. And um, I started dropping solo shit, and it was hard as fuck to find my shit. Okay. When I would type in KC and Google, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you'd get Kansas City Chiefs, <laughs> KC this, KC that. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta find a way to distinguish myself. Okay. So, um, I, I put the three on there. Okay. Now, it's a funny story about how the three came about. To be honest, shout out to my nigga, just getting out the pen, my nigga OG Killer. Okay, OG Killer. Yeah, you yes, know, um, if you know him, you know your OG on the blood set. Mm. And I fuck with, man, everything, blood, scripts, G, yeah, whatever. But that was one of my close, close, close friends. Okay. It wouldn't was, it still is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big dog. Right. But, um, you know how the game, if you used to the game culture, niggas talking lingo. Lingo, lingo, baby. So, he would never call me KC. Okay. It was always K3. Mm. Because the the three is the third letter of the C, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I like it. So, so I was just, one day I was just thinking, I'm born in March, it's the third month. Okay. And three is just like, it's just a number that pop up number. with me a lot, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna just put the three on there, you know okay. what I'm saying? And I tried that, and I Googled the shit, and didn't too much shit pop up. Okay. So, I ran with the KC3, and now it's just a lot easier for you to find me on the internet. Yeah. But, the politically correct answer today is why is your name KC three? <laughs> the KC is me, and the three is for my three special things: it's God first, okay. my family second, and then the music third. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really what I what I stand on too. Yeah, you know the music is that important to me. It's like third yeah. most important in life. So sure. it's KC three, man. Everybody that know me though, they gonna. Just be like KC, but right. when it comes to the music shit, it's KC with a three, man. Don't forget the three. With the three, y'all. You can't find me without Come the three. <laughs> can't find me without the three, baby. You know what I'm saying? So shit, man, how I feel um, starting out, you know what I'm saying, being in groups and then, you know, 
merging solo when it's time to be solo or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Man, mm, who knows? Uh, <laughs> just truth be told, like shit. I even when I'm in a group, right. nigga, my niggas know. Right. Shit, I'm one of them like competitive niggas. For sure. So shit, even when I'm in a group, I'm feeling like I'm Jordan, nigga. Fuck everybody in the group right now. Yeah. We boxing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Until until we finish. Yeah. But um. I was the only child for a long time, so shit, okay. I'm just used to being solo. That's just... Anyway. Yeah, that's just okay. something that come natural. Right. All my other cousins would be out playing and shit, I'd probably be in the corner playing with myself. Right. But as far as, like, when I even first started the music, man, shout out to my nigga Rich Ratchet. Okay. You know, Rich Ratchet and Reese, um, we went to middle school together. Okay. And we had both got in trouble and shit, and uh, we was in detention. And I checked check homie out, and he over there writing some raps and shit. Now, I was always into the music, and this was around the time I was on MJG and A-Ball, real yeah. heavy. So Rich Ratchet, he a big nigga, you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So he like, I'm writing a rap. <laughs> And I'll never forget this shit. We was at Ewan Park and I was like, nigga, you think you ain't Bob, fat ass nigga? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> so we was, we was close like that. We was right. always yeah, really yeah. close like that. So I used to go hard on him. Yeah. And he was like, nigga, try this shit. Because like, I used to be real articulate okay. in school. You know what I'm saying? Even though my grades might not have reflected it, mm -hmm. I was still small. So I tried this shit and... Yeah, since then, I was like, man, you know, it ain't as hard as I thought it could be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of came natural to me. Right. So, shout out to my nigga Rich Ratchet. We Rich started out together. Okay. So, it was me and him, and we was getting beats from my guy Ebo. Okay. This was before anything, and then, um, we was really, like, he from Parkwood, I'm from Bardo, so... At the time, we were so young, we couldn't get together but at school, so I ended up really being around. Right. With, with the Untouchables, it was just because I was around them, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it came a time, um, I can't remember, we, we had got to Wise Creek by then, we was oh, in high okay. school. Okay. And Rich Ratchet had told me about an opportunity to some... This was back when CD stores and tape stores yeah. existed. The golden era. And uh, he was like, man, it's a guy looking for some artists. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the tape store at the time, but it's right over there where Princess Chicken used to be. So. Soundstream. No, nah, that was on Cross the Highway. Okay. Soundstream, that's my side. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I never okay. forget that. But um, this was right where Princess Chicken was out east, like um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't make think of the name of that one. Yeah. Okay. But, um, okay. Anyways. Yeah. We go in there, and I audition for the guy. That's why it's crazy. You asked me about the group and the solo shit. Yeah. So I we had already started the Untouchables at this time. Okay. But we had never put nothing out. We was going down on music road just doing like singles and shit okay. well what we thought was singles we was just doing a song whatever song we write we go record it you feel okay. me so when ratchet had told me about the audition i said fuck it after school i'm going down there and i went down there mm. and i met crooked iq q shout out oh, to nigga. my nigga q shout out to and um Ooh. it was this little real little uh, I don't know how to describe him. He was quiet, little, just a little short dude sitting in the back. Okay. So they was like, gone to spit your shit. And at the time, I was 16, nuts dragging the grind. You feel me? Yeah. You know how we was at yes, that sir. age. I'm yes, feeling, sir. I know everything in the world. Yeah. And yeah. shit, I'm the yeah. best at whatever I'm trying to do. Yeah. So nigga, I spit for the nigga. And he was like, all right, I'm signing you. <laughs> like, right then. Yeah. And I was like, well, look, I come as a group. Oh, so, man. It's like a, yeah. Uh, yeah. a bitch with the kids, you know yeah. what I'm saying? 
I, I was like, look, I come as a group, homie. It's two other niggas, and they just as dope as me. But yeah. you got to take my word on it. If you fucking with me, you fucking with them. Yeah. So he was like, well, look, y'all meet me back down here in such and such days or whatever. To make a long story short, this was, uh, it ended up being the CEO of, of the label. His okay. name was Keith Smith. Okay. And um, we started making history from then, you know what I'm saying? Keith Smith was, uh, he was the guy putting out Crooked IQ. Um, they, they had a group back then called the Lockdown Boys. He ended up putting out Click Tight's first album too. Okay. Him being on um, Go to Lenny. Okay. So yeah, man, the little, the little quiet guy in the back ended up being Keith Smith, man. And it was just like, Man, you never know how shit gonna work out, but it was just a blessing that I had went there that day Hell just yeah. to meet him because it, it really changed my life and yeah. put me on the path for the reality side of fucking with this music. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But just to say, I'm saying all that to say shit, I was always in a group. I've been in groups since I started, but okay. I still moved along. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of times, even when we wrote, they are come to me like it was me, and the Untouchables was me, Mayhem, and my brother, oh, Skinny Mayhem. Boss. Okay. So a lot of times, one of us will write a song or write a hook on our own, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the other nigga just hear it, yeah, and we'll follow yeah, through yeah, like that. Yeah. But then, like, Mayhem, he was older than us, okay. and he kind of had, like, had me, like, my brother was kind of, Going a, a straighter path than us, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, we yeah. was a little more wild. Yeah, yeah. Man was older though; he was already out of school. Okay. So not only was he out of school, he had dropped out of school, and the nigga was trapping. Yeah. So I was like, "Shit, yeah, he making some money. This is what the fuck I need to be doing <laughs> right now." <laughs> so yeah, I was like, "Fuck yeah. the school shit too." Yeah. And looking up to him, he's a big bro. Yeah. And I'm sitting in a trap with him nine times out of ten, and we writing, coming up with music, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, as far as, like, the group thing, man, the group was, the group thing is, it's, it's beautiful when there's people that you fuck with, like, yeah. a lot of times you see groups and niggas that be in groups and they fall out or don't be together, like, them still my niggas to this day, like, sure. me and man him. If he called me, we might talk to the phone die. Right. And the other nigga is my blood brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I'm stuck with him whether I want to be or not. You know? <laughs> yeah. I ain't got no choice. So, um, like, the Untouchables was the first group. Okay. And we we dropped in 1998. The, the second group situation was Goodfellas. I remember that. But... I Truth be told, people seen it as a group because we didn't really accomplish our goal. Okay. See, it's more like a, a dip set situation. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. The Goodfellas was nothing but the Untouchables plus Coop, C4. C4, okay, yeah. cool, cool. That's Lil Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, okay. this is, like I said, we dropped in 98. Goodfellas was probably established around 2002, 2003. Okay. I'm just guesstimating. I could be totally wrong. But anyways, at the time, I had a um, I had a trap spot on Clawsford Highway. Yeah. But it was where I lived. Okay. Because I didn't know no better. Yeah. And Coop lived with me. We okay. was together, like, every day, all day. And I when I heard him, like I ain't never heard nothing like that ever. Mm. He he got the juice. Yeah. I was like, this is what music's supposed to sound like from a young nigga. Right. So I was like, we got we got the fan base already and how I'm gonna introduce the whole label situation because with with the untouchables, now the um the CEO nigga okay. is locked up. You know how it was yeah, like you know. back then. Yeah. If let me just tell everybody that's listening, if you from our era, the CEOs was the dope man. Sure. That was just period. Yeah. And shit, 
he had caught his he had caught his situation. Now it led up to him getting a life sentence. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yes. I always give a shout out to my nigga because like homie showed us yeah. the world. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In a different light and. I never had nothing negative to say about dude because the way he took us around and moved us around yeah. as kids, yeah. I don't know how he had the patience with it for one, yeah. but for two, he was teaching us and showing us shit that, that like his values I'll never forget, man. Like, we was going to Penn and Pixel. Penn and Pixel. Back when, like, yeah. I tell a nigga, man, you go get an album cover, yeah. you give it a 50 or 100 dollars. <laughs> Three hundred dollars is expensive. <laughs> like I give Ebb tight like yeah. five hundred just yeah. because I yeah. love him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's right. my nigga. Right. But when we went to uh, Pen and Pixel, it was like six, seven thousand dollars for uh -huh. an album cover. Yeah. But the first time we walked into Pen and Pixel, nigga, I walk in in the building. This in Houston, Texas, and um, we meet Birdman and Slim. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And this is when. I think BG had uh, All On You Volume 1 out. Okay. So we was loving that shit in the villa already. Yeah, yeah, that shit took off. Yeah, We was but, the main market shit. Man, I think we pushed <laughs> them to the next level. Yeah, we did. But it's crazy, nigga, because me being from Bardo, you know what I'm saying, like, they you know, having a relationship with Jimmy. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's the big homie, one of the big big dogs from where I'm from. Okay. And um, we in, we in Pen and Pixel, like, nigga, that's Birdman, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I say that to say, like, he, he spared no expenses with us. We was mm. flying first class. Nigga, young nigga, 16. We we hit the miles and shit, and if if anybody remembers, we got suits on on our, yeah, on our album covers. Remember that. So, when we hit the mile, the nigga like, y'all go get what y'all want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, yeah. at 16, I was 16, they, he, Joe was 17, and Mayhem was probably 20, okay. 21. I'm going to get the J's. For sure. You know, I'm going to get the J's and some Jabos or some whatever type of pants and type shit yeah. he was rocking. And he was like, nigga, you can get that shit, but you can wear that shit while we down here. We need something to let them know how we mob, and I'm just really not even thinking on the level that he on. Right. But the nigga go get us seven, eight thousand dollar suits. Oh man! And I'm like, that's killer. That's killer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some some different shit. Different shit. So that's why I said like, I'm so grateful for the experience of even meeting homie yeah yeah because he showed a nigga so many things and started teaching us to think different and move different that's why our music started being like music and our look was always like different right because instead of wearing the khaki suit or whatever we was rocking back then he was like now nah, just think of above that What's the next level? Okay. And then what's the next level after that? Yeah. We're going to put y'all in that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that shit was like super dope. And then we had like TV commercials. Yeah. Man, running back to back. Nigga, I can remember nigga coming in school and the principal had the posters hanging up. Oh, man. So yeah. it just really kind of, it really fucked us up because they was treating us some type of way because it was... All this shit was a new wave to the city. Hell All yeah. the the way that niggas move and the way they, they promote, this shit come from some shit that we kind of created. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had never seen niggas with TV commercials. This shit is on ESPN and every fucking channel on the cable. And that motherfucker was running. He had to spend 20, 30 grand mm. just on just the, the pushing of the, the commercial because it, it wouldn't stop playing. Yeah. You feel me? Every yeah. time I cut on the TV, I was like, God damn. It got to the point where it, was, it seemed normal to me. Okay. And looking back on it today, I see how abnormal it was. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I had never seen niggas doing that shit. And even after that shit, I seen niggas try, but it never was to that level. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, when he caught his case and I seen how in depth in the game he was, yeah. I understood. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It was, a multi-million dollar nigga. Yeah, so, it was different. 
Yeah, but um, back to the the group thing, like it, it elevated from good. I mean, Untouchables to the Good Fellows, but it was supposed to be like really the introduction of Coop. You know what I'm saying to our fan base. Okay. So at the time, we put out a few albums that people look at as Goodfellow albums like it was a group. But if you actually go listen to the albums, it's a lot of solo songs. It's a few untouchable songs. A lot of just me and Coop or just Coop okay. and Mayhem. Because it was really supposed to be setting up everybody to be on their own path. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. So we did that for a minute. We did like two of them bitches. And um, I think it was the time I caught my, my situation. Okay. And after I caught my situation, everything kind of went like different. It, 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 it went on hold. Yeah. Now, in between the Goodfellas situation, the Untouchables, we had got a record deal. Okay. We had got a record deal with, um, it was a label based out of South Carolina called Never So Deep Records. It was it was really a, a big situation because um, the the label Never So Deep they got a um, what is it called a label deal okay. through MCA Records. Yes. Okay. Now, just to show you like my ties, the DJ. For the Never So Deep record label okay. was Charlemagne the God. Oh, shit. So, this is based in South Carolina. We drive eight, me and Mayhem and Joey will drive eight and a half, nine hours to South Carolina, Charleston, a little place called Charleston, South Carolina, to go meet with these guys and end up working out our situation. Yeah. And, like, Charlemagne the God was, I was tripping because like, I believe in the real God. Right. And this shit was like 20 years ago, nigga, like, this is 2002. Right. And I was like, nigga, I ain't calling you that. Right. <laughs> but me and him like, were really close. Like, we, we still, if I hit him up right now, he, he'll hit right back off the social media or whatever. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's like one of my aces in the hole. That's my nigga though, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I can hit him for advice or whatever. And then the and the, the producer, the label was based from a producer and his father owned the label. Okay. The producer was named DJ Bless. Y'all can Google him, uh, catch him on Instagram. DJ Bless, man, that's my nigga, like platinum plus producer. Mm. He, but he's from New York. They from New York and they moved to Carolina. Like Charlemagne them from Carolina. Okay. So these niggas moved from New York to Carolina and started a label. And ended up getting um, the first artist they had was a guy named Infinity, and we were supposed to drop after Infinity. We was the group after the guy, um, the guy Infinity. He was from South Carolina, but um, it didn't really work out when he dropped his album. And I don't know if they, if the budget shit didn't go right, right. or what. Right. But this was the first time we seen rap money. Okay. When we signed with MCA slash Never So Deep Records, we got a real advantage. Okay. And I was like, oh man, this shit real. Yeah. Like, we went to the bank and I had zeros. Okay. And commas. Mm. Y'all hear that shit? And I was like, Don't y'all hear this shit? But this shit was crazy, nigga, because we was, I was 21, 22, so I was like, fuck rapping. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in South Carolina, fresh off. Fresh off the, the case situation. Yeah. But the trap in the veal wide open. Hell yeah. And now I got enough money to go buy what the fuck I need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all I can think is, we got to get home. <laughs> we got to get home. Hell yeah. So I come home and I catch another one. Uh. I catch one, but I had a, a nasty little lawyer, Paul Wall. Okay. I don't know. If you're from the Ville, you done heard of Paul Wallen anyways. He got me a nice probation situation. Okay. So, right before we get our, we finna get us another advance, they hit us with, y'all need to come to Carolina and um, we need y'all here for like a month. 
So at the time, I got a trap jumper, more money than I ever had. I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. I got this probation going on, but that's the only bad thing I got going on in my life. We got the good fellowship going, in, so now we bringing Coop with us. Okay. We also bringing Bar None. We got him a check. Bar. You know what I'm saying, shout out to my nigga shout Bar, Bar None. So um, I'm like, shit. Now I see these niggas got power. Yeah. They flying us Miami, man, all over the country for bullshit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nigga, y'all ain't even putting none, no music out, and I just see. They getting this budget and they spending it, but I, I also see just how much power is in dealing with the music game. So I'm like, look, I'm on probation. I can't come. They like, look, we're going to make a call. Uh-oh. Straighten that out. Them niggas get me off probation. Oh, shit. Like, real talk. They got lawyers that strong. Mm. So I'm like, well... If that worked, let's try this. <laughs> I really, I hit him with the, hey, I'm fucked up, nigga. I got a crib because I was like the youngest nigga out of my crew with the right. crib. Okay. So I was like, look, I got this crib and I can't be down there that long because shit, I'm going to be fucked up and I can't pay my bills. Okay. Two days later, my bills paid off in six months. Oh, shit. So I'm like, this shit is really real. So at that point right there is when I made the decision, like I'm all in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This shit right here, cause I ain't got to do this shit that I'm doing. Yeah. And if they believe in you this much, you should believe in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it was different. From that point on, I never looked at it the same. So we went down there and we, we recorded a, a lot of music that you can still like you can still find some of this shit today on um I think they got a website, never so deep records dot com. If you look it up, you'll hear me on the phone with Charlemagne the God and just old oh, shit and I don't really like fuck with that shit because I'm so stuck on the music I make today. Like yeah, I was yeah, telling yeah. you when we listen to the the old shit, I don't even wanna hear no old me. I just I wanna hear the new me. You know sure, what I'm saying? Sure. Not even the me I just dropped last week. I wanna hear the new me. Next year, me, right? Cause I'm so focused on trying to get better, but um, with with the Goodfellas situation, we groomed. We, he didn't need much grooming, but we groomed Coop, and um, I had shout out to my niggas too. Like with the Goodfellas, Goodfellas, I had my niggas from the streets. My brother Tyrone and Telly. They two actual brothers okay. that own a construction company, but okay. they was my childhood friends, and they was like, we believe in this shit too. Yeah. So when y'all seen us riding around with the wrapped up vans, yeah. you remember all that shit, the wrapped vans? We was flooding the cities with posters. We was doing shows in Texas and shit. It was a lot of thanks to them too, because shit, they came out their pockets and was like, we don't rap, we don't do shit. Right. But... We good fellas, so okay. the mob was way bigger. That's why we came we came up with the like the mob, cause we was on really like some mafia and shit. We was just a family of niggas. We pushing this music, we pushing this tree, we pushing whatever we want to push yeah. as one, and we was moving as a unit. But um, that shit, the music in Nashville. I ain't seen nobody really prosper from that shit until Buck got with G on it. So a lot of niggas, after you spent fifty thousand, eighty thousand, whatever you spend, and you not recouping that money that fast, right? It's hard for a nigga to keep on just pushing his money into it. Right. When like I was just telling uh telling my nigga Wesley, Wesley Crutcher, shout out to Wesley, we just shot a video. Okay. He was like, you know. I feel like I should move to the A with my talent because in the field, I don't get enough money. Right. And I said, I respect that. But what you got to understand is from an artist standpoint, in the field, 
when an artist spends his money with you, you yeah. should love that because he's probably spending his rent money. <laughs> he's probably spending his child support money yeah. and he's not going to recoup it. Right. You know sure. what I'm saying? Sure. Nine times out of 12, <laughs> he's not going to recoup that yeah, money because yeah. niggas is not really making their money back, yeah. the money that they spending. So the artists that do this shit, they do it because they really love the music, especially if you see repetition. You know what I'm saying? Like, so after all of that, just I said that to say we, the good fellas just stopped because hell, the streets picked back up and it was like fuck the music again. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And nigga was like, this shit is dead. Yeah. I'm tired of spending my motherfucking money. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. every situation after the Keith situation, we spent our own money. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. A nigga was grinding, hustling. Gambling, whatever we was doing to get money, and taking all our money, and it might be everything but the rent money, and spending it on this shit. You know what I'm saying? And expecting a fast turnaround. Yeah. Well, we didn't understand shit. First of all, we're in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a white city. Yeah. So you can't expect the same yeah. turnaround that you get in a black city. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? If, sure. if a nigga would have had a fluid outrage push, in Memphis, or if a nigga would have had a source of the plug name in Memphis, or a Quanti Cash push in Alabama, you know what I'm saying? You'd be in a, that yeah, all of them niggas would be in much different situations than they are today. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Urban areas, man. So it's it's it's, it's really hard hard here because like i said i ain't seen a nigga until until buck and then he still had to you know help other other powers to be in the outside yeah pushing yeah. outside yeah. in yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but um after the after the goodfellas situation i did a few solos and i liked it okay i like the feel of that okay you know what i'm saying yeah because two I would always, even though I was the youngest, Mayhem kind of put me in a leadership position. Okay. And I don't know if the, my nigga would be lazy sometimes or what. <laughs> it was just easier for him to put it on me. Right. And I had to push it together. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard getting niggas on one schedule. Getting yeah, niggas in one place at one time. Yeah, yeah. Keeping niggas, even mind frames in line. Yeah. So yeah. I did the, the solo thing. And it was way easier because I had to have nobody there but me. And yeah. I'm gonna be there when I'm supposed to be there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm gonna move when I'm supposed to move. But after that, um, God works His mysterious magic again, and I'm riding with my dog Black Beast. Uh oh. Yeah. I don't know how to fuck. <laughs> like Beast done kidnapped me. <laughs> and he take me to this nigga. He's like, man, I'm finna take you. Me, and my nigga. He from Cali. Okay. Blase, blase. I'm like, man, all right, yeah, whatever. You know, yeah. I'm just fucking with beast. <laughs> and we pull out, and we pull up on um, Loco and Hall. Okay. And right then, like me and Hall been together ever since. Yeah. It ain't been no separation. Like yeah. Loco, um, Ralph, he he gone to the feds. You know what I'm saying? That's who Hog was actually rapping with. Okay. That's who he started with. Okay. That's Mafioso. Mafioso. Yeah. yeah. So um, the Mafioso thing started. Okay. With, you know there was they got songs with Pimp C and shit like detailing. <laughs> DT Mafioso and I remember that. Pimpsy, yeah, yeah. they doing their things. Yeah. But uh, me and Howell got together, and it was just like, man, salt and pepper. You know what I'm saying? That shit just that gonna shit, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah time you see the set the table, them yeah, two things yeah, gotta be on it. That shit was the. That was and it got to the point where our relationship was so close that his mama and my mama consider us brothers. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's nothing that I could do to not have him in my life. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's, okay. that's big bro. So. How show me a whole different side to this rap shit. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, you know, think outside the veil. 
off the top. Stop thinking about the video. That's the being your problem. Think outside the video. So yeah. the first video we shoot is out of town. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. did the Vegas. Yeah. We're, we're gonna you gonna hop on that bird, ain't you? Man, I mean he <laughs> had me on the airplanes like niggas driving from <laughs> Murfreesboro to Nashville. We was traveling yeah. the country like that. So. And then he's so connected. Yeah. Every time when we touch down in these different cities, we at home. Yeah. Like, I'm talking so, about we 15, 20 niggas deep and they all love us, embrace us, and we move how the fuck we want to move. You okay. know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck what you want. You want some bitches, you want some money, you yeah. want whatever you try and get. When we touch down, bro got that shit lined up, red carpet laid out. Okay. So, me and I put out uh, two or three albums together. Yeah. And then we had got with um, Felonious Records. Yeah, I remember that. You know what I'm saying? That. We had a nice little situation going on where yeah. it was uh, us, d yeah. Paper. Yeah. It was a lot Krona. of Krona. Krona. Yeah. Shout out to Krona. Free Krona, man. Yeah, free Krona. Like, that's one of the most talented niggas I ever met in my life. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, we riding around the city. Yeah. And homie would just come up with, like, a song. Yeah. Of nothing. And you'll be like, man, this is the best song I ever heard in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And homie is, like, really, really the truth. Yeah. Show. It's just in his soul yeah, to make just, music. Just a jukebox. But um, me and all like we we done had we live we lived a real rap nigga life For sure. without the platinum plaques and oh yeah the rap money. Sure. We might have made the money a different way, right? But we didn't make the money from the music. For sure. For but sure. we live yeah. better Come than on, most man. of them niggas was living. Come and on. When we pull up at the club. We had them niggas looking at us. Sure. They was watching our swag, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, Hog taught me <laughs> a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, it really made me, he, he the one that made me stick my chest out. That's what it is. Cause shit, I seen nigga, no matter where we go in the vi in the world, the vi we dominant niggas. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They love our swag. They yeah, love this on, Nashville man. movement. Our, our, our lingo, our, 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 on, our, the way we talk, the way we look, the way we act, on, the way man. we think. You know, it's it ain't love. the same as it's the rest love. of these niggas, it's and it's everywhere. and they love it, man. It's they really love it. Man. But now I'm on. Um, no, we got. Hold on, we got the new album. What we yeah. got right here? We got. You know what I'm saying? 1998. See this? You know what I'm saying? That's the uh, motherfucking album on the way. Real quick, we gonna come right back after we pay these bills. Real quick. Oh, okay. We want a commercial. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> right back. You know what I mean? For yeah. sure. Yeah. New album by KC3. 1998. Out now on all streaming platforms. Make sure you go stream that. Make sure you go buy that. Make sure you go download that. KC3, 1998, the new album out right now. Let's go. Don't give a fuck about where you live. Don't give a fuck about what you claim. Don't really care about who you is. I'm from Bar. So KC3, motherfucking album, 1998, nigga. For sure, for sure. It's on the mother. It's out. It's out. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere you can find music, you can find it, man. Talk KC3, 1998. Mm. Um, I just, a year ago, I dropped Fool's Gold. Yeah, Fool's Gold, that shit was stupid, too. Yeah, they that had shit. great reviews off of that. Yeah. Uh, I think y'all gave us the, the video, the video award, man, C4. So, yeah, that's that right there. That shit so fucking hard. And it took a nigga back, man. It's like some southern New York. It was like some, some New York slash southern shit. Man, listen, my first three CDs I ever bought in my life okay, was it is. Scarface the Diary. Okay. All these the same day. Nas Illmatic and Snoop Dogg Murder was the case. Ooh. Like, I had $100 I had got for my birthday or some shit. Yeah. And this was when CDs were down at $30. 15. Them motherfuckers was $20, 20, 20 $25, $30 yeah. the sound stream, man. Sound stream, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Nigga. Well, if you get it early, he gonna hit you on that Thursday. Yeah, you know so, what I mean? Cause it come out Tuesday. <laughs> I had and this like niggas don't understand when you get a CD or two back then, you was stuck with that. You stuck with that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You know what so I, mean? I had got all three of them CDs the same day, okay. and, and that influenced my style. So that's Nas, Scarface, and Snoop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's 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 super. The crazy Southwest right and East. Yeah, I mean lyrical 
gangster. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. A little bit of trap. Yeah. But um, this night, this, the new album is called 1998. Okay. That's when she was just good for me. Like, we dropped the Untouchable album in 1998. I was just on top of life, and music sounded better to me. Right. Back then, like, I like how music sounds today, but I don't love the singing rap, and you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's new, it's new to me. And I'm adjusting. You gotta adjust. <laughs> I'm adjusting, but um, with this 1998, I'm trying, I, I just want to show how we used to get on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you'll hear a lot of West Coast heavy, early down South, Heavy. Did yeah. Hog influence you on a little bit of that West Coast sound too? Um, it was more killer music. Like okay, my, killer. That's my producer, killer music. Now, Hog is saturated with that West Coast. <laughs> shit, you know what I'm that that Sebo, that that oh that, that shit. That, so yeah. he make me don't want to play it. Oh okay, he, okay. Cause I like I'm gonna push Cameron in his ear. Okay. And he gonna push Snoop in my ear, okay. but like he biased because him and Snoop, he might be in Snoop crib playing yeah, the game yeah. and shit. Yeah, but I just be on some nigga. Listen to how he spit this metaphor and this and that. We gotta incorporate that type of shit in my music, yeah. and then he like, uh, what's his favorite line? Computers computing. Mm. He hate that shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's brother. You know he like strictly West Coast man. I love that shit though. Like. Cameron is one of my favorite artists. You know I mean, when I'm you saying? hear certain people rap, you can tell, you know what I mean, that, what kind of influences they had. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, at least I know. We, you know, we So, like, like when me and Howard make music, you, if you listen to it, he be heavy on the hook. Right. Like, he be heavy on the verse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that shit is how it be. Yeah. But, like, this the first album I did um, in probably 10 years without Howard going there. Okay. And... My brother going through some shit like he lost his mom. Yeah, you know yeah, the what show, the show. Rest in peace, Mr. Brother. Rest in peace, moms, man. And, um, man. The show. I gave him a break on this album. So, you gave him a break. Yeah, he, yeah. Not only did he lose his mom, he had a little son. He yeah. had a child. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, listen, I got this one next. Yeah. Let's go around, hang your ass back, ready to box. I saw know, something so. on the on the on the gram today with a with a uh, new name for that one too. What was that I saw? Return of the Trillers. There it is. You know what I'm saying? That's just some shit that that, that I threw out there, though, just to, to wow. fuck with his mind. Yeah, but it made you me know, be like, yeah, I'm waiting first, on I'm ready. His first album, <laughs> his first or second one was Trillers in the South. Trillers in the South, yeah. And that's one of the Trillers niggas living, man. Shout out to my bro, Young Hall. Yes, sir. So when we together, we the Trillers niggas in it. You yes, know what I'm saying? So the last uh, album we did was Guap. Grind with a purpose. Okay. And uh, I just told him, man, it's time for us to come back. I just, we just had a conversation this weekend, man. And I was just like, it's time for us to get back on our shit. So, yeah. it's time for the return of the trillers. You know what come I'm saying? On, we said we said a lot of the trends, like I said earlier, that I see niggas doing the day. Like, we was shooting five, ten videos for one album 15 years ago. Seven, sure. 12 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Sure. When them motherfuckers was causing a bankroll and mm -hmm. we was flying out and shoot, he got videos overseas and here and there. So you know what I'm saying, me and how man, we we got a lot more to get a game, man. Man, yeah. Man, y'all, yeah. um, with this 1998 yeah. shit though, I'm I'm proud of I'm proud of what I did, man. I got Quanti Cash on man, there. Man, you going crazy? I got Gooch Heffner on there. Yeah. Me and Gooch, me and Gooch putting together an album too. Yeah, young, that one with you and Gooch, that shit crazy. Me and Gooch putting together an album, I think it's gonna be called, uh, It Must Be Two Sides. Mm -hmm. I like Cause that. Cause he a West Side nigga, I'm a yeah. Bardo nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got 615 exclusive on the album. 61. That's my little bro. You sure. know what I'm saying? Like, dude is a great artist, really humble. Sure. I, I love fucking with him. Yeah. Um. I don't know who the fuck else. I got Virgo on there. Virgo. Yeah, it's my girl. It's my yeah. girl. She's singing her ass off. Yeah. Then I introduced my little nigga, Nate King. He's singing okay. on there, too, the r and uh, I got a lot of different producers on there. J.O. J.O. Okay. Felony. Um, who else? Uh, 
Who else I got? I know I got killer music. I ain't never did. I don't do music without putting killer on the, the track. He record and mix all my yeah. music. Shout out to killer. Uh, oh, okay, Raw Tunes. Raw Tunes. Raw Tunes. Raw Tunes, man, this is our first time working together. He did the majority of the album. I don't even know how I can even think of it to say his name. Okay. Raw Tunes did the majority of the album. He did the single Terrell Owens. Okay. And it was crazy because, nigga, I dropped Terrell Owens and the real Terrell Owens was sharing my shit on Instagram and shit. Oh, for so real? Was like, yeah, that's killer. dope. That's, yeah. that's one of them little things that I never forget. Yeah, man. I got a track from Mayhem. Mayhem is Mayhem. doing more of the producing now than okay. the rapping. He's, like, killing it with production. Okay. He okay. got his own production company, his own production team. So, y'all check out Go Hard Mayhem. He did the uh, track with Kwani and Gucci on there. It's called Streets. We should be dropping a video to that soon. And I got my nigga Jack Zane. Jack Zane! Hey. West Side. West Side Jack Zane. Yeah, man. Hey, okay. like, coming up. Yeah. Shout out to Murder Rich, first of all. Shout out to Murder Rich. My little brother Tank the Heat Total. Yes, sir. But, um, Murder Rich, like, I always kept me up under his wing. Okay. Like, I was like the sixth man okay. with the Sir the World click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't win Sir the World click, but I was always where they was at, and Murder kept me in pocket. Yeah, like, yeah. always with them. You know what I'm saying? Nah, that's so, real. doing it, like, I had Deuce and Sosa on the last, well, on the trap season. Yeah, trap season. And um, I had to get Jack Zane. Like, Jack Zane is, was a dream come true. Yeah. Cause I just love. I, I remember they just get, get your mob, mob on, on. Yeah. yeah, just riding yeah. Just, just Jack Zane on the yeah. radio. Yeah. But um, beside the music, man, for one second I just gotta stop and just give a shout out to my nigga Killer Pooh. Rest in peace, Killer, Killer Pooh, Pooh, man. man. I love you, little homie. Man. Big homie, man. Yeah. He'd be mad as fuck if he heard me say little homie. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my nigga Killer Pooh, man. It's, Yo, it's just man. a sad situation, but uh, yeah. I just wanted yeah. to stop and just say that because yeah. it just hit my heart. But I'm glad that I got to work with him. I put him on the trap season three. We got a song. It's a nasty song. I think I'm going to re-release it with a video and just yeah. let some of his people just yeah, yeah, rap dope. his verse and shit. But we got so many artists that, man, the Ville just, we need to just come together and support our own, you know what I'm saying? Got to, it's what we're doing. For sure. Authentic way, though. You Authentic know what I'm saying? TV, man, look. Come on, I man. I want to give a shout out to Tank the Heat Total. Shout out to Tank. C4. My nigga in Chattanooga, Mild Pimp. Mm. Hey, that's a big dog right okay. there. I, I'm going to make sure that you get an interview with Mild Pimp. Let's go. He's one of the biggest. Niggas you never heard of. Let's get it. Um, who else I need to holler at? Um, of course, Young How. Yeah. My untouchable niggas. And um, shout to Sparks. Shout out to Sparks, you man. Know what I'm saying? Hey, man, that's OG that raised me, man. Man, yeah. Look, I got a song on here though on this 1998 album, and it's called Bardo. Okay. I'm from Bardo. That's my neighborhood. Yeah. We like. We not a big name even in the city, but I just, I made the song to let niggas know, first of all, where I'm from, second of all, I done been, like I said, everywhere in the world, I mean, in the country, you know what I'm saying? I was in Compton, and I realized this shit is only this big because these niggas keep putting it in my head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. Ain't nothing no different than my hood. <laughs> This it, shit is the, the same. This shit is like go, really like, the same. Damn, this ain't no. But um, I've been putting bar on the map for the last twenty years, man. man. Yes, sir. And shit, it's, it it make it a little harder because like I ain't from the west side where right. they got the whole west side behind the artists. So I ain't from the east side like my nigga okay. Lito. Shout out to Lito. Shout out to Lito. Shout out to um. Home. What's my young nigga man? Trap. Trap man. So, Trap man Dale going we, crazy right now. I love Trap music. Yeah, I man. I love his music, so, man. That's so. my little nigga. But, like, I knew him before he was rapping. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, I okay. love to see him do what he doing. Yes, sir. And uh, Star, he just uh, always been genuine, man. Yeah, like, he like family to me. I don't yeah. even, we did a song, but I don't even think about that shit. <laughs> It's just my bro. It's like a brother to me. A little yeah. brother. He just tall as fuck, but he little bro. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, with that ball though, shit, man, I just want want the Ville to know this should be like 
wherever you from, you rep your hood, you know what I'm saying? Your hood, ain't to the wrong world. With it. To Cause the world. shit, I done been everywhere, man. I done sparred with the best of them when it comes Come to this now. music, you know Come what I'm saying? Now. And they respect us, like, when, when I seen Sosa do songs with Game, or I seen Tank with Boosie, these niggas respect the fuck out of a Nashville nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to let them niggas know where I'm from. I'm putting my shit on the map. I'm yes, putting sir. Nashville on the map, but I'm also putting my hood on the map. Because even in the even on the Nashville rap scene, we don't have a big enough name because we don't yeah. have that many artists. So I'm going to let y'all niggas know, when you see KC3, remember Bardo from across the tracks. You know what I'm saying? Bardo. Now, shout out to my nigga G-Born, too, because okay. BNOC. BNOC. They started that yes, shit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I'm young enough to be still relevant today, but I'm yeah, old yeah. enough to remember when he came out. That's you real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. So I just want to just let niggas know, man. I love my hood. That's just where I'm from. That's what I'm on, man. For sure. Yes, sir, man. Authentic TV. KC3. Go get that new album. Trap. I mean, not, not Trap Season. Not Trap Season. You can go get Trap, trap season, season is the mixtape. 1998 is the album, you know what I'm saying? You can go get Trap Season 1, Trap Season 2, oh Trap Season 3. Volumes. You can go Tap get in. Fool's Gold. Fool's Gold. That was my, that's my shit 1998 too. is just the new, it's, it's just the, new it's just the yeah. next chapter though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. I got a big book, and big it's book. just the next chapter. I'm already three, four songs in on the new one. And 1998 just dropped a week ago. It you is. know what I'm saying? Hey. Tap in, KC3 Authentic TV. Hey, Kevin, yeah. I love y'all. Thank mm-hmm. you.